Because when you stand on that altar in front of your husband on your wedding day, you tell me, where is the laughter? Where is the mockery? Who will be making fun of you then? Nobody. There will be complete silence in that church on that day. And any of those people who made fun of you would pay a million bucks to be in your shoes. And when you stand up there, you will say, I will honor you and I will cherish you all the days of my life. Well, today's a day of my life and today's a day of your lives. So keep that in mind and take it to heart because your lives are going to be so much more than those four walls in your high school and it's going to go way and far beyond that. For those of you in the audience that are virgins, I have the utmost respect for you. And don't ever be ashamed of that, but be proud of that. Because I know plenty, yeah, you clap, that's right. <laughs> that's right, you be proud of that. <laughs> I know plenty of people who would love to trade places with you, and I was one of them. For those of you in the audience that aren't virgins, that have made past mistakes, I don't care where you've been, I don't care what you've done, or what has happened to you. Because frankly, I've been there and I've done that, and it is never too late to start over. There was a girl in Philadelphia, she came up to us after one of our talks, and it turns out she had slept with 15 guys in the past three months. Now, you know the names that girl had in her. That girl, she is a this, she is a that, and that's all she's ever gonna be. You know, <laughs> everyone judges. And I asked her, I said, why are you doing this to yourself? And she said, oh, it's fun, you go to parties, you hook up, you know, it's fun. And I think for once, someone took this poor girl seriously. And I just looked at her, and I said, is it really fun? And she just looked at me with her eyes full of tears, and she said, look, no, it's not fun. She said, my parents are going through a divorce right now. The minute I walk into my home, there's nothing but hurt and hate. And just for the moment that those guys hold me, it feels like love. Even though I know it's not, at least I feel like somebody wants me. That girl is not a this, she's not a that. And she doesn't deserve anybody's judgment because she has a heart identical to yours and to mine and ultimately, all that we want is love. So if it was too late for her to start over, then it was too late for me to start over. And it's never too late for anyone to start over. I don't care who you are, where you've been, what you've done, frankly, it doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter to God. All that matters now is where you go from here. Now I want you ladies to imagine for a second. Imagine for a second when I heard that guy stand up, give his testimony and talk, and, and I was just comfortable in my life. I was complacent and I said, you know what? That's cute, that's nice, but that's not for me right now. I don't feel like it. Thanks, but no thanks. Maybe later. What if I said that? What if I didn't say that yes to God? I, with all of my heart, believe I wouldn't be standing here talking to you today. With all of my heart, I believe I wouldn't have married my husband, Jason. And with all of my heart, I believe my children that we have together would not have come into existence if I didn't say that yes to God. And I look back on that day, and I could have gone either way. And that's exactly where you ladies are today. You have two roads, two ways, two options, and it's up to you. God leaves it solely up to you. And it's huge, because the yes or the no that you say to him directs your course, and you decide. And I decided that day, and it was a blessing in my life, nothing but blessings. Granted, it was hard. Granted, I'm coming sane overnight. And granted, I struggled. But without struggle, there's nothing. You have to struggle. You have to build up your endurance. And so you have that decision today, ladies. Where do you go from here? How do you live this out? Where do you start? I would say first and foremost, my starting point was confession. If you want to start over, you start a confession. It works together. So that's where I started. And I tried so many times to stop living that lifestyle. I, didn't, I wasn't happy. I didn't want to live that way. And every time I messed up, I would make this resolution to myself. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to be better next time. I'm going to say no. And there I was at the parties. There I was with my wife. Always the situation came, and I fell time and time again. And I couldn't figure out why. And that day I realized 
because I was doing it without God. Without God, we're nothing. With God, we have all the power of heaven behind us. And that yes that I said that day, he gave me some of that grace and it allowed me to start over. Totally clean, totally new slate and I went to confession. Granted, it was hard. It was the hardest day of my life because I had a lot that I had to do in there. And this time, I didn't go to confession and thought it was, oh, cute, sweet, I'll just, I'll just keep a couple sins back here and there. It won't be a big deal. No. I went in there and I knew I needed to be humble and I needed to be honest if I really was going to do this. And that's what needs to happen. So have the courage, have the humility to go to confession. And Christ is just waiting there to give you a clean slate. That day was one of the hardest days of my life, but it was one of the proudest days of my life. I can't even tell you how I felt coming out of there. I felt like a new woman. I felt like a new person. It was unbelievable. And I felt a piece of what I wanted that day, what that guy had. He wasn't ashamed. And I came out of there, I wasn't ashamed anymore. And it was beautiful. It was beautiful. And I've savored that moment since then. It's, it's been amazing. So go to confession. I know they're gonna have confession all week long. There's gonna be opportunities. Go, I encourage you to go, renew yourself. Christ has chosen each and every one of you to come here. He has asked, he's put out invitations, and you said yes. He put out a lot of invitations to women. He put out a lot of invitations to young men. Come, be with me, deepen my relationship this weekend. Some girls are like, no, I have a party. No, I don't wanna leave my boyfriend. No, I have things to do, that's okay, maybe next year. But you said yes. He gave you the grace, he gave you the courage. So to take that step further and go deeper in your relationship with Christ. So one, you start with confession. Second, you have to really look at the relationships you were in. I was in some pretty bad relationships and I couldn't figure out why. So I wrote a small book called Pure Womanhood. And in this, uh, in this book here, I devised what I like to call a dump him list. Oh yes, a dump him list. And if any of these apply to you and the person you're dating, you need to say, say la vie, I'm out of here, <laughs> literally. So the first is you have to tell him more than once to stop. You feel the need to fix him. He looks at pornography. He hits you, pushes you, or does anything to frighten you. He gets drunk, takes drugs. He doesn't care if you lie to your family. He leads you away from God. He puts you down, then acts like he's kidding. He cheats on you, he lies to you. He flirts with other girls. He uses guilt to get you to do what he wants. He always resents the time you spend with your family and your friends. He behaves badly and then blames it on other people or things. He can't stand on his own two feet without you, and you can't stand on your own two feet and remain pure with him. These are not minor faults, but signs of major, major issues that can be a disaster to your future marriage. Now, we did a talk uh, in Denver. We did a Steubenville conference, and I read the dump him list, and I did my whole thing, and a mother came up to me after the talk. She said, you know, I dated a guy that had almost all of the things on that list. She said, you know, I thought I could fix him. I thought our love was stronger. I thought he would love me more and he would change. She goes, I ended up marrying him. And after we got married, everything got worse. She goes, now we have three kids. I'm looking into a divorce and an annulment because I can't stand it anymore. Don't be a missionary dater. Don't think that you can fix him, that your love's gonna be greater because I've been in that situation and then it's a hopeless one. So if any of these things apply to you, get out. You better safe than sorry, that's what I always say, so just get out, it's, it's just much better that way. So, next thing that will really help you in this journey is adoration. There is an adoration chapel right up those stairs. God in all of his glory is waiting for you. And I went there this morning and I saw tons of people in the shop, which I really wanna go and I haven't yet, but I saw tons of people in the shop and there was maybe two people in adoration. And that's why we're here, that's why we came, to center ourselves in Christ, to become closer to him, to have a deeper relationship with him. So I would really encourage you to go to adoration. 